Welcome to Go Church Bradford's online service. I'm Fina. Thank you for joining us. It's great to have you with us today. I believe that the Lord has directed you here and it's our prayer that you would be able to understand and take hold of what the Holy Spirit brings to light as we look to Him to help us grow and develop in our relationship and love for Him. Go Church Bradford is part of the Go Church family with members in Beirut and Liverpool, Manchester and of course here in Bradford. Our vision is we are a family of churches, we are working together to reach the world and we want to reach the world with the love of God, which is shown in our values, love, grow and go. It would be great to know where you're joining us from and if you would like us to pray and come in agreement with you for anything, we are more than happy to do that. So leave us a comment in the chat and we'll get back to you. Shortly we will be starting our service with a time of praise and worship and we invite you to sing along with us. I want to encourage you to engage and connect in your heart. Set aside any distractions and let's give God our full attention and focus. You know the Bible says that God inhabits the praises of his people so expect God's presence to flood your home as you worship him from your heart. After praise and worship we will have a time of prayer followed by the sermon and for this week's title, it's I want to say thank you. We pray that the word of God impacts you today and that you'll be able to understand and hear his heart for you. So we encourage you to have a faith expectation that you will receive the word of God in a fresh way so we may all continue to grow. 
We won't have a Zoom meeting after our service today as we're meeting in-house. Lastly, before we go into our time of worship, I want to invite you to like and subscribe if you're on YouTube and if you're watching on Facebook to share and possibly start a watch party. When you do, you will enable these messages to have an even greater impact all over the world. For now, why don't you join in and worship with us?
words in that last song. It speaks of who Christ is in us and how his grace and steadfast love set us free. That when we're going through dark and difficult times, he is by our side to lead and defend us. So I'd like to invite you just to take a moment and just thank him. Thank him for his faithfulness and his goodness in your life while I lead us in prayer. Heavenly Father, we just want to say thank you. Thank you for sending the best of heaven, your son Jesus, to die on a cross so that we can spend eternity with you. Thank you for every day, Lord God, that you have shown us mercy, grace, and love. We thank you that we have a sure foundation in Jesus, that when we look to you, Lord God, that we know that we have hope, that when we trust in you, Lord God, that we see the answers to whatever we're going through, that when we trust in you, Lord, that we see the victory. Thank you, Jesus, for your great love. We pray for everyone joining us today, everyone who's listening, I pray your blessing upon each and every one. I pray that you will strengthen, that your grace, Father God, will be in abundance so that we may see the victory in our lives every day as we live for you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Hey there, a warm welcome to everyone who's watching. My name is Matthew Tapsaw, and I, along with my wife Fina, pastor this amazing church, Go Church Bradford. Now, I want to encourage every single one of us to be expecting that God will minister to each one of us personally during this time. Be looking to Him to impact your life and to speak to you where you are at right now. And this week, I wanted to talk about being thankful. The title of the sermon is, I wanted to say thank you. Colossians 2 verse 7. Let your roots grow down into him and let your lives be built on him. Then your faith will grow strong in the truth you were taught. And you will overflow with thankfulness. And that's in the New Living Translation. And in the Living Bible it says, Let your lives overflow with thanksgiving for all he has done. Our lives should overflow with thankfulness. When I look at people and I think of those whom I regard as outstanding. You know, one of their characteristics, whoever they may be, is that they are thankful. It's something that really connects me with people. It, it's when they are thankful. It's when they show genuine appreciation of what they have in their lives, for what they have received, and for what others have done for them. Being thankful is such a great characteristic to have in our lives. And the reason why is, is because it's closely connected to humility. Humble people are thankful. Humble people can say, I appreciate what you have done, and I want to say thank you for that. Humility will look at what someone has done and, and say, you know, you made a decision to do that. You didn't have to do that. You know, even if it's part of your role that you've taken on or part of your job description, you still had a choice to either do it or not do it, and you decided to do it. So I'm going to say thank you. Pride, on the other hand, is not thankful. Pride chokes on saying those words, thank you. It just, pride can't do it. Pride is ungrateful because it just assumes that you had to do what you did. I mean, to someone who is struggling with pride, saying thank you is something that is demeaning and humiliating. Whereas for those who are walking in humility, saying thank you is really, really easy to do. Now, you may be thinking that being thankful or not being thankful is not that big a deal. But actually, a lack of thankfulness is an indicator that you are yielding to the spirit of this world. Listen to the scripture. So 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 to 5 says this, But know this, that in the last days, note that in the last days, the days just before Jesus comes back, that this will be occurring. Perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, 
brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, and from such people turn away. So we see in that passage of scripture how the Holy Spirit is telling people that in the last days, just before Jesus comes back, that there are going to be signs and indicators that men are going to be acting in a certain way. And he lists some pretty horrific characteristics that men will pick up. Men will be unholy, brutal. You know, men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, proud, blasphemers, taking the Lord's name in vain, taking God's name in vain. They'll be traitors. They'll be lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. There's a whole bunch of really kind of horrific characteristics that mankind will be like. And right in the middle of all of that, it says unthankful. Unthankfulness is going to be a characteristic of people who don't know Jesus. At the end of days, it's going to be a characteristic. It's a part of the spirit of this world, not of the people of the word, but the people of the world. And we don't want to have that char characteristic. We don't want to be unthankful. We might not think that being unthankful is that big a deal. But to God, he says, this is going to be one of the characteristics of a people at the end of times, just before Jesus comes back, who don't know me. And we might think, you know, being brutal, being headstrong, being a traitor, being a blasphemer, being lovers of men and lovers of pleasure. We might look at these things and think, well, those are the big deals. But God is also saying, actually, being unthankful, that's a big deal as well. There are so many positives to being thankful, to being grateful. People have studied the benefits of being thankful and being grateful. People aren't even Christians, but they've taken the time to sit down and study what are the effects that being thankful has in our lives. And they've come up with a lot of positive attributes. Here are some of them. Being thankful opens the door to more relationships and better relationships. A 2014 study showed that not only does saying thank you constitute good manners, and it is good manners, but showing appreciation can help you get new friends and is a factor in developing better relationships with the people you have already in your life. Being thankful improves physical health. Grateful people experience fewer aches and pains and they report feeling healthier than other people according to a 2012 study. Being thankful improves mental health. Gratitude reduces a multitude of toxic emotions ranging from envy, resentment, frustration, regret, depression, and increases joy and happiness, all from just being thankful. Being thankful helps you sleep better. In a 2011 study, it showed that just writing in a gratitude or thank you journal improves your sleep dramatically. So what they did was they got people to just write down every day for 15 minutes, just a few things that they were thankful for and grateful for before they went to bed. And the study showed that they slept better and longer. Being thankful improves self-esteem. A 2014 study published found that gratitude, being thankful, increase people's self-esteem, which is really, really good. And today I wanted to focus on some reasons why we should be thankful to God, why we should say thank you on a daily basis. You know, there are so many reasons why we should be grateful to God. But when was the last time you stopped to really count your blessings? When was the last time you stopped to really think about what God has done for you, what he has given to you? Now, when we think blessings, usually our thoughts immediately go to our material and physical benefits like houses, jobs, family, our health. But there are even greater spiritual blessings that we may not have considered. Every good thing from God that is given to us because of our salvation should fill our hearts and minds with gratitude and praise and with thankfulness. The Lord has promised us amazing spiritual blessings as a result of our salvation of being a child of God. When we truly know what God has done for us, what Jesus has done for us, we would wake up every morning with joy, raring to go, and we would have a heart overflowing with thanksgiving. So why should you and I be thankful? We need to say thank you because God has chosen you. Ephesians 1 verse 3 to 4. All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms because we are united with Christ. Even before he made the world, God loved us and chose us in Christ to be holy and without fault in his eyes. God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. This is what he wanted to do and it gave him great pleasure. So we praise God for the glorious grace he has poured out on us who belong to his dear son. He is so rich in kindness and grace that he purchased our freedom with the blood of his son and forgave our sins. He has showered his kindness on us along with all wisdom and understanding. You and I, because we're Christians, we are chosen by God. Now the reason why God chose us is not to ensure that we have a good time or become successful and, and super popular on social media and influencer. And, and listen, there is absolutely nothing wrong with those things, by the way. But his reason for choosing us was so that we could experience spiritual realities. His goal is that we experience the following spiritual realities in our life. Verse 4, that we would be holy and without fault in his eyes. God loved us and chose us in Christ to be holy and without fault. When God sees you, he doesn't see you as someone who has missed it. Verse 5, God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. He chose us so that we would be adopted. We are literally part of God's very own family. You know, the Bible says that at one time, before we asked Christ into our hearts, we weren't part of God's family. We were part of God's creation, but we weren't part of his family. But after we've asked Jesus into our lives, then we are adopted into his family. And it's not like God treats us differently from Jesus. We are in Christ. When we've been adopted into God's family, we are in Christ Jesus. So when God sees us, he sees us just the way he sees Jesus. That's an awesome way to be viewed by God. Verse 6. So we praise God for the glorious grace he has poured out on us who belong to his dear son. He chose us to be blessed with amazing grace. That amazing grace of God, which changes people's lives for eternity. That strengthens people, that enables us to do what God wants us to do. That enables us to be a blessing. He chose us to be blessed with his amazing grace. Verse 7. He is so rich in kindness and grace that he purchased our freedom with the blood of his son and forgave our sins. You are free. God has chosen you to walk in freedom. Freedom from all the works of the enemy, freedom from fear, freedom from any bondage. God wants you to walk in freedom. You were chosen to be free. Whom the son sets free is free indeed. And you're forgiven. You're forgiven of your past mistakes. You're forgiven of your past wrongs. The Bible says that everybody has sinned and missed it. Everyone has blown it. But when you're chosen by God, you are forgiven. When you read Ephesians 1 verse 3 to 4, I mean, you can just see how there are so many blessings that God has poured out into our lives through Jesus Christ. You know, the amazing thing is God didn't have to do any of those things for us. He, he really didn't. When he does this for mankind, he, we don't deserve this at all. He does it because he sees something special in you. He does it because he sees something of great value in you. He does it because he absolutely loves you. And for that, we should say thank you. We say thank you because God has chosen us. And we say thank you because we are sealed. Ephesians 1.13 In him, Christ, you also, after listening to the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation, having also believed, you were sealed in him with the Holy Spirit of promise. We have been sealed as children of God. Now, a seal in biblical terms, and just like today actually, is used to guarantee security or indicate ownership. You know, ancient seals were often made of wax and they were embedded with the personalized imprint of the guarantor. When someone's seal was put upon a document or even an item, sometimes you could put seals on items, that indicates that the person putting their seal were taking full and complete responsibility. So we are secure because this seal cannot be broken since it's been made by God. No one can break God's seal. No one has the power and authority to do that. He's the most high. So when we get sealed, when he stamps us with the Holy Spirit, we are his forever and we should be thankful for that always we say thank you because we are sealed 
and we say thank you because he always provides. Philippians 4 verse 19, And my God will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. God promises to supply all our needs. When we trust Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we come under the awesome umbrella of God's personal care. And a part of his care for us is that he will always provide for us. He knows exactly what we need and will provide it at the best possible time. Philippians 4.19 is an amazing promise because it provides so much certainty and security in an uncertain and unsecure world. God promises. He says, I will provide all your need. And that's amazing because God can't lie. So when he says that he will provide all your need, he literally means everything that you need, you don't have to worry about it. I will provide it for you. The word all there, it means the whole quantity or extent of a particular group or thing. It means the whole amount, quantity or extent of, the entirety of. So whatever need you have, God says, I can provide and I am willing to give that to you. Now, we have to receive it by faith in our hearts first. But you can be assured that whatever need you have, God is willing to provide that need. Whether it be food, um, wisdom. You know, there have been times in my life I've needed wisdom. Uh, I've looked at situations, I've, I've gone, Lord, I really don't know what to do here. So I need your wisdom here. Strength. There are times in our lives when we may be feeling weak, when we may be feeling like we just want to give up. At that time, you need strength and he's willing to give it to you. Courage. There will be times in your life when fear comes towards you. At that time, you need courage. Peace. God is willing to give you peace. He is the God of peace. If you need peace in your life, in whatever circumstances may be, God can give you peace. Healing. If there's a physical challenge, if sickness and disease is coming your way, the enemy is sending sickness and disease towards you, God is willing to give you healing. He is more than willing to give you healing. A spouse. If you need a spouse, if you believe in God for a spouse, He is more than willing to give you a spouse. He is more than willing to give you that person that lines up with your heart, with your desires. He is more than willing to give you that person who will walk with you for all the days of your life. You know, whatever it may be, God is able to meet that need. The Lord is constantly watching over us and caring for us. He's looking out for you and for me. Now, through every situation in our life, I love this promise that God says that he's never going to leave us or forsake us. He's always going to be there for us. Isaiah 41 verse 10 says, Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not anxiously look about you, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Surely I will help you. Surely I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. We say thank you to God because he always provides. And we say thank you because we've been given the privilege of prayer. Jeremiah 29 verse 12. Then you will call upon me and go and pray to me and I will listen to you. I know that it's easy to take the fact that we can pray for granted because literally everyone can pray. But really, prayer is something that we should be thankful for. We have been given the privilege of prayer. We have been given the privilege of access to God to be able to enter God's presence and have instantaneous communication with Him at any time that we want to. That is amazing. You know, the one who is the most important, the most powerful, the most wise, the most regal, the most noble, and you can have His ear anytime you want. Now, in this world, you have to schedule meetings, book an appointment, make sure that the time is right, and that's just to talk to your local doctor. Let alone people in positions of authority or celebrity, you know, ministers of state, diplomats, CEOs of, of major companies, royalty, sports stars, whatever it may be, they usually don't have an open door policy with you. They aren't like, hey, you know, whenever you want to talk, I'll lay everything aside, I'll put everything down and just talk with you as long as you want. You know, it's usually not that way with them. But with God, you do. I mean, God is the creator of everything seen and unseen. He is He's God Almighty. And He's the most noble, most high. And He says, hey, you, anytime, 
that you want to talk anytime whatsoever my door is open to you my ear is open to you anytime you want to, it could be about anything and god says if you want to talk about it we can talk about that this is an amazing privilege i mean prayer is an amazing privilege it's direct access to the most important of all anytime you want so we should say thank you because we've been given the privilege of prayer and take i would say take advantage of that privilege Take advantage of the fact that you are, you have God's ear anytime. Take advantage of his wisdom, of his knowledge, of his understanding. Take advantage of his strength. Take advantage of just being in his presence. Prayer is a privilege that we should take advantage of and say thank you to the Lord for. And we say thank you because there is a coming resurrection. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 51 to 52 says, Behold, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised imperishable and we will be changed. There is a coming resurrection. And when we are children of God, we have the certainty that we are going to participate of that resurrection. As Christians, we have no reason to fear death. So many people all over this world have a great fear of death. Now, death is definitely not something that we are in a rush to get to, but we don't need to fear it because when Jesus returns, God has promised to give us a new eternal body. Not that word eternal. It means lasting or existing forever without end. There's coming a day when Jesus will come back to this earth. He has made that promise and I believe it, that day is getting closer and closer. It's called the second coming of Christ. And if you're a child of God, if you have given your life to Jesus, ask Him to be your personal Lord and Savior, on that day, you'll see Him face to face. And He's going to give you this fantastic, holy, awesome looking, terrific, eternal body. That is awesome. You're going to look at yourself and think, you're going to look at people around you and go, man, you look good. You're going to look at yourself and like, man, I look <laughs> And when He does that, we should say, thank you, Lord. Yeah, and the Bible also says that he's not only just going to give us a new body, but he's preparing for us a place in heaven. John 14, verse 2 to 3, In my Father's house are many dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you, for I go to prepare a place for you. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And the Lord's saying that he's preparing a place for us in heaven. He's preparing a heavenly home for you. You know, the, it's going to be a wonderful home. The, the wonders of your heavenly home, right now we might not be able to imagine exactly what that looks like. But I can tell you this, it's going to be awesome. It's going to be just as awesome as the God we serve and love. No one is going to look at their heavenly dwelling place and say these words, you know, that's it? I, I kind of expected more of I mean, that's all you could do? Those words will not come forth from our lips. Um, we will say things like, wow, amazing. This is beyond compare. This is beyond my wildest imagination. I just couldn't see this. We will be blown away by the heavenly dwelling place that the Lord is preparing for us. And when we see that and we recognize everything that he's done for us, how he's given us this eternal bodies, how he's giving us this eternal place in heaven, we're going to say those awesome words, which we should say. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Colossians 2 verse 7 says, Let your roots grow down into Him, and let your lives be built on Him. And then your faith will grow strong in the truth you were taught, and you will overflow with thankfulness. The Living Bible says, Let your lives overflow with thanksgiving for all He has done. We've been talking about thankfulness and saying thank you to God and really appreciating what he has done for us. We say thank you because God has chosen you. God decided to choose you to make you holy, to make you clean and to forgive you of all your sin. He didn't have to do it, he chose you. We say thank you because we are sealed. We are sealed for eternity and no one can break God's seal because no one has the power and authority to do that. We say thank you because he always provides. God's caring nature 
means that he's always going to look out for and provide for us. And whatever need that we have, he says, yes, I'll provide that for you. We say thank you because we've been given the privilege of prayer. We get the privilege of unlimited and unrestricted access to God anytime that we want. And we say thank you because there is a coming resurrection. God promises that in eternity you'll have an awesome eternal body. And I'm looking forward to seeing that. And a majestic residence in heaven. If you are a Christian, a child of God, there's just so much to be thankful to God for. The things that I've listed today, they're just a tiny portion of what God has done for us. However, all these things that we can be thankful to God for, they are only for those whom God calls His children. They are given to those who have put their faith in Jesus. Romans 10, 9, 10 says, If you openly declare that Jesus is Lord, believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is by believing in your heart that you are made right with God, and it is by openly declaring your faith that you are saved. What the scripture is saying is that when you speak out from your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and you believe that in your heart that He, he died for your sins and was raised from the dead, then everything that we talked about in today's sermon becomes a reality in your life, becomes a certainty. And if you want this now, and by the way, you are the one who makes that decision, not God, you do. If you want that now, all you have to do is say a prayer out loud and mean it from the heart. So if you would like to do that, just follow me in this prayer. Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins. I turn away from living for myself and I wanna live for you. I believe you died on the cross for me. You were buried and on the third day you rose from the grave. I ask you into my heart to be my personal Lord and Savior. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Come and take complete control of my life. Amen. If you prayed that prayer for the very first time, we know that you've just become a child of God. Now, I want to encourage you to get into a Bible-believing church and keep God first place in your life. In fact, if you did pray that prayer for the first time, we want to send you some material, some e-books to encourage you in your first steps with Jesus. And these are the new birth and in Him. I know that these books will be a real blessing in your life so please send us your email address and we will be more than willing to send over these materials for free just email us at bradford at gochurch.cc you can also connect with us via social media on facebook instagram or twitter now for everyone who joined us online thank you for taking the time from your weekend to connect with this church we pray that you're blessed today we love you all have an awesome week god bless you all